everyone. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and kick it off. You know, um, I think that we've gotten a lot accomplished over the course of this training camp and through those three preseason games. Um, I was really happy with the depth of this roster, you know, particularly these last 80 guys that uh, a lot of them we had to have tough conversations with today, but um, re really thought that we had good depth and said goodbye to a lot of guys that exhibited all the things that we're looking for in a Bengal. Um, so really hats off to, to Duke Tobin and his staff on assembling those guys for us. And again, it led to a lot of tough decisions today, a lot of tough conversations, but that's just the nature of the business and um, excited to move forward with the guys that we got. But go ahead and fire away with the questions. Coach, was this the hardest exactly. one for you on thus far? Wayne, can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. Was this the hardest one for you thus far? I mean, none of them are easy, but. Yeah, I, I would say so, just because, um, I, again, all those, all those 80 guys that were there today um, have all shown things over the course of training camp that are really encouraging. And um, so, so, again, it was uh, a lot of tough conversations. And, yeah, this was, you know, it's hard to say. They're all hard. This one was not easy. Thank you. The decision on Michael, did he have any chance on Sonny to play his way onto the roster or did he play his way off or was it kind of just trending that way, Zach? Well, oh, Michael Jordan. Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan, yeah. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of depth there with that group. And, and right now there's 10 guys on the roster and um, we feel good about those 10. And that was just the number that we're at right now. And um, again, there, there's, there's some depth there. There's some guys with a lot of potential. There's some veteran guys. There's a good mixture of things that we're looking for and we'll move forward with that group. Zach, how, how much uh, manipulation do you think? I know it's impossible to say an exact number, but um, this is the final 53 quote. I mean, it's not final, final, is it? I mean, there's still things that can go on. Of course. You know, it, it's all of our jobs to continue to assess what's out there and however we can strengthen the roster, we'll look at it. Um, so, again, it's, it's, uh, we feel good about the, the 53 guys that are on this team, um, but, but just like every other 31 teams in the league, we're going to assess what's out there over the next 24 hours and make the decisions that are best for us. Zach, what went into the decision on Thaddeus Moss? I think the tight end position was a tough group overall, and uh, all three of those guys have shown well. Um, but ultimately, Mitch is the one that, that we put on the 53, and um, he's got a lot to show. We think Mitch has a lot of potential, and so we're excited to see what he can do for us. Obviously, Zach, if, I could, if, if I can follow up real quick. Uh, Zach, obviously, uh, Joe spoke very highly of Thaddeus on Sunday after the game. And I'm wondering if, you know, you took into consideration or how much you might have taken into consideration his thoughts and uh, his compliments of him. Yeah, Joe, Joe's a big part of this team and, and he understands we're, we're making decisions that are not always easy. Um, so, again, that, that's just all that went into that. Coach, uh, what, is, what does the trade give you? Uh, what does the trade with the Giants uh, give you? And uh, the fact that you cut a guy like Daniels, I, I guess that reflects how much deeper you are this year there compared to last year. Yeah, BJ's uh, a guy that we had high grades on, think highly of, um, played against him last year, thought highly of him when we played against him. Um, so, again, he, he adds uh, some good depth to that room that we're really excited about. It did, it did lead to some tough decisions there in that room, but – um, ultimately, we're excited to have BJ and what he can bring to the table for us. Both Michael Jordan and Billy Price were high draft picks relative to their position. Why didn't those two picks end up turning out as starters? What happened with their development? Well, again, I think we've got good depth in that room and a lot of guys that we're excited about. And every year you got to make new decisions and bring new guys into the fold and see what works best for the group. Um, so, again, that's that's not – Anything um, towards Billy or Mike? Billy was a trade, you know, and it was we needed some D line help, and uh, Billy's done some great things for us. Um, Mike's played good football for us, winning football as well, and so again, those weren't easy decisions to make. How has Mitch Wilcox grown, Zach, since uh, signing as an undrafted free agent last off season? I, I think, uh, you know, he he. Uh, that's that's a that's a really good question. Um, he's always flashed a lot of potential with us. Um, I think he was really green when he came into this league, just, just uh, the nature of the system he came from, really green. A lot of things were new to him, just, just kind of being in our offense and uh, being a bigger part in special teams, obviously. And so, again, he's continued to improve in both those areas. Um, again, just, he, he fits just like a lot of other young players in the roster. There's still, still a lot of growing left to do, uh, but we're excited about the potential that Mitch has. <laughs> Follow up on that real quick. Uh, is he is he out of concussion protocol yet, or kind of what's the status update for him? He's still going through the the process um, for at least tomorrow. Okay, so, and also uh, Khalid Kareem, do you have an update on him as to what might have happened to him and kind of where he's at? Um, not yet. You know, he he um, 
we'll assess him here in the next couple of days and make some decisions there. What, what exactly uh, happened? Because I think a lot of us missed it, to be quite honest. Just an injury early in the game. Trey Hill, it seems like the, uh, the hip or the hip flexor or whatever the injury is, isn't a severe one or the Billy Price trade probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah, more short term, you know, just a couple of days here. Um, again, if, if we were playing a game this Sunday, he could go. Uh, so, again, we'll just monitor him these next couple of days. But but fortunately, it wasn't anything severe. So they're really in the last preseason game. The, 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 the silver lining is no injuries to uh, complicate what you tried to do on your final cut down. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you always come out of there with, with a couple um, issues, but uh, nothing that's going to be severe and, and cost us too much this season. Zach, the decision you, to, you to talked play. a couple of times about the, the constitution of your offensive line room, a lot of veterans in the front, but the back of it, I mean, you have rookies and guys with not much experience. How much does that go into it when you have your whole second wave being mostly guys that don't have a whole lot of NFL experience? Yeah, it's those guys got to grow up fast, you know, and and they are. They they absolutely have each one of them have improved over the course of training camp. When you specifically talk about the three rookies that were drafted this year, um, and even Isaiah Prince, who who in a, a he's not a rookie, but but he was off last year. Um, he's he's really developed over the course of this training camp specifically, and then Fred's played a lot of football for us. So um, you feel like there's there's a lot of value there with those five guys. Um, they're in that second wave. They all bring something different to the table. They're all getting better. Uh, that's the encouraging thing, you know. And so, again, we, we feel like we've got a good group of 10 that, that provides a lot of competition, a lot of depth, um, and a lot of encouragement going forward. Hill in particular, what was it about him that made you guys believe the arrows so far pointing up that you'd be willing to move on from Billy? I think the first um, steps that he took were in those games. You know, those first two games in particular – uh, really felt like pretty significant jumps for him that, that grabbed your attention, um, his play speed, uh, his strength, and in his overall processing. Again, he has a long way to go still, but uh, that, that's really what grabbed your attention. And then he just got better and better over the course of practice over the last two weeks. And um, you're, you're really encouraged with his future. Again, he was a guy that we really liked that, that we felt like fell in the draft to where we were at. Um, you know, uh, so again, we, we were fortunate to get him where we got him, and, and he's again on the right pace development wise. With Kareem's injury, are you worried at all about the depth that you have um, at the defensive end position? Well, you know, we, we've obviously Joseph Asai went on IR, he'll be out for the year. Um, so that, that hurts you. But again, any, any positions right now when you're at a 53 man roster is concerned if you have an injury at that spot. Um, so again, uh, we're excited about, about what Clid did early in that game. and um, hope, hope to see more of that quickly. You so, so, was there any conversation with the three guys, Hubert, Adenogy, or Asai, about carrying them through, or was that never really part of the equation? Um, repeat those. Uh, Osai, you grouped into those. Osai and Adenogy yeah. and, and Hubert, was there ever a thought of carrying them through at all? So he, he's different. He, he's on IR. He'll be on IR for the year. Um, we can't bring him back at this point. The two guys that are on NFI, Hubert and uh, Adenogy, uh, they're eligible to come back after six weeks. And so that's, that's not a season long deal. That's, that's six weeks. Again, could be longer, could be right at six weeks. Uh, but that's the flexibility that we have with those two guys. Trades aren't, uh, aren't real fruitful in the national football league anyway, but you made one before final cut down after final cut down are trades even tougher to make, or what's the history on that? Uh, who you tell me what the history is, you know, it's, it's uh, certainly it, things are still on the table all the way through the trade deadline, you know, midway through the season. So, um, again, it's, it's, we always assess every way to strengthen our roster, um, immediately in the future, all those things come and come to the fold there. So, um, again, we'll just make the best decisions for our club going forward. Coach, how relieved are you at least to have this first wave of, uh, of this done so you could focus on football a little bit more? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it's not the fun part of things. You know, obviously, you spend the better part of today having those conversations with guys that you've really grown to admire and respect. And um, it takes it out of you a little bit. Uh, but but again, our staff has done a good job working on ball. You know, they're the guys that only have one or two guys they're dealing with at their position. They've done a great job moving forward with with the Minnesota plan. Um, now that the preseason games are behind us. So um, I am excited to, to set the roster, move forward and uh, and start getting ready to play real football here. Thanks. Zach, what, what are the next 24 hours like for you, for the, the front office, as you evaluate the, the 31 other teams and in, in all the, the players that were cut? 
our guys have done a great job, you know, Duke and his staff um, over the course of training camp, monitoring the other teams over the last 48 hours, trying to anticipate action. The, the wire, you know, tonight we'll get a better feel for who's actually been released. And um, those guys have already done the background and all this stuff. So again, we're, we're, we're heading in the right direction in terms of making sure we evaluate every player that's available, um, making decisions tomorrow morning. Um, and then at noon, you know, you get a better feel for where all the rosters are headed. If you Zach, with, with, with Kareem, uh, the fact that you guys didn't put him in, put him on IR today, I guess that indicates that there's a chance that you believe he'll be back at some point this season. Is that a fair, yes. fair representation? Yes. When you, uh, when, when you let players go coach, do you, do you, uh, basically tell them, look, we're interested in you coming back here as a practice squad player and try to get a leg up on other teams that may be contacting that person off the waiver wire to join their practice squad. Yeah. People can't contact them yet. Um, but, but uh, you want to be as honest as possible. Um, absolutely. We have those conversations with guys. And uh, again, you want to be honest in all areas with these players because they deserve it. They worked hard for you. Um, it is best for their future, whether it's here or somewhere else for them to hear the honesty um, they'll appreciate that from you. They appreciate that from the position coach. That's the best way to, to move forward with it. Again, it's never a fun conversation, but you don't want the guy leaving the room unclear on on why or how or any of that stuff. And so, uh, again, we, we do our best to make it a point to be as honest as possible. And uh, the, the guys that we want back on the practice squad, you know, we, we communicate that to them. You get 24 hours. Do you get a day jump on the other teams? With our own guys? Yeah. Yeah, but I think everybody really fits that mold. You know, and, and, and again, a lot of guys that, um, have been in your system, want to remain in your system because they right. feel like the best chance moving forward. And and there's probably more flexibility now with the roster, with practice squad than there ever has been. You know, it, it really started with COVID and the new, um, uh, just the, the, the new rules that, that get guys up with standard elevations and COVID elevations. So there's more flexibility now than there ever has been. Coach, you guys did a lot of work uh, trying to build up the trenches, you know, on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel like that might be the biggest difference between this roster this year and last year's roster? Is, is, that, is that one of the biggest differences? That That's probably fair to say. Um, you know, you do feel like that there's been a lot of change there on both sides. Um, the depth has certainly improved as well. And, and uh, you know, we expect to get overall better play from the entire units on both sides of the ball. And everybody knows when you play better up front, um, it helps the whole thing go better, you know. And so, again, I'm really excited about the groups that we're going to roll out there. Um, the guys that made the roster, uh, the, again, they, they, they're, they're what we want to be about, um, and they've played good football so far through this training camp. So I'm excited to see those guys in action. Zach, Zach there's there a lot of it, uh, Go, go ahead, ahead, Brandon. I'll, go I'll come ahead, back. Um, ahead, um, Zach, I'm curious. Yeah. Who are we going with here? Uh, Mike okay. and Ben. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Sorry. Um, Zach, I'm curious from um, the time that training camp began to now, has anything surprised you about the way your roster is on hold? Um, no, I, no, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, I think that there's a lot of guys that we were playing on taking the next step that have, um, you know, first and second year players. I think a lot of the, the free agents that were new to us, um, we expected to come in and contribute, and they have. And so I can't say that anything has been overly surprising. You know, you're, you anticipate the day one of training camp, hey, our rookies are going to develop and, and start to make improvement over the next 30 days. Our free agents are going to make a significant impact on our team immediately. And, and, and the guys who have been in the system, that are young players in years two and three, are going to make the next step. And, and there's not a lot of guys I can point to that made this 53 that didn't um, develop over the course of this training camp. And I'm really excited about that. So, so no surprises there. That's what you expect to happen. Sometimes it doesn't happen, um, but that's, that's encouraging for a team. From a timing standpoint uh, on a league basis, obviously Osai's on IR. He got put on IR before the 53 man cut down the uh, non-football injury guys. You said after six weeks, they could Correct. potentially come back. If a player is put on injury reserve after being put on the 53 man roster, is it four weeks now with the new, or is it three you say? Three. Yep. Three weeks. They can bring them back off with the new uh, protocols. Okay. Correct. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, Ben. I know you were waiting. Yeah. Um, you know, what do, what do you make of the offensive line at this point? And where do you feel it stands as you guys are at, at, at the conclusion of the preseason? Yeah. You know, uh, moving forward, um, I feel like that, that unit that's been rolling out there with the ones um, has been performing well together. Their communication has been great, but at the same time, there, there is still, um, 
more progress we've made with the guys behind them, pushing them. Um, those guys have gotten better weekly. I'm talking about the, the, the young guys behind them. Um, and so again, it's just added competition, you know, and it's, it's good to see. And, and I think any, any, um, great organization at all positions, it's not set in stone for an entire year. Guys are always working to maintain their jobs and, and that'll be no different here. And we're going to continue to work to push all of our starters, all of our backups. And if, if things change over the course of the season, things change over the course of the season. So again, we, we, we like where we're at. We like the guys that we're going to put out there week one against Minnesota. We expect them all to play well. We expect them to play well over the course of the whole season. And you'd love to not have to make any changes. And the guys behind them can continue to develop and push as well. And, and you got a great, strong roster. Um, and, and again, I'm, I'm really excited with the 53 that made the team and um, the depth that we've got at all these positions. I apologize if you answered this. I hopped on a few minutes late, but from an overall standpoint, um, what do you feel like this roster that you have, what do you like about it? And just from an overall standpoint, can you just talk a little bit about your roster? Yeah, I, I like the overall football intelligence of the team right now. I think that that leads to faster play, better communication, um, more good things happen. When, when guys are smart, they understand the roles in the team. They understand what you're asking them in all three phases and they can play faster and, and just more explosive plays happen, more turnovers occur from the defense, the special teams. Um, so again, that, that part is really exciting for me that we have um, over the course of training camp, taken that step over training camp. Again, none of that matters if you don't do it during the season. But, but again, I think that um, we've gotten a lot accomplished that way in training camp. I really feel good about um, the veteran leadership on this team. Really, really, really feel good about it. They, they push me in the right ways. Um, they push the young guys in the right ways. They're helping to develop guys, their positions. And that's really encouraging for, for this season and our future. And then I just had one more question for you. You kind of alluded to it with Ben's question about the offensive line, but you talked about the younger guys pushing and the roster not really ever being set. With Jackson Carmen, obviously second round pick, expectations are high. And I know as coaches, you guys don't really pay attention to what the outside is saying, but obviously when you draft a player in the second round, you expect him to be an impact player. What do you need to see from him for him to be able to be a starting guard for you in the NFL? Yeah, well, we, we certainly expect him to be an impact player for us. And, and sometimes that happens right away. Sometimes that happens in the second month of the season. Sometimes it happens in the second year. You, 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 they determine when that happens. And again, a guy like Jackson has made progress over the course of training camp. He's made progress in the last week. Um, we're certainly excited for his future. Um, and, and just like any young player, we want to see consistency from day to day. That, that's one thing that vets tend to figure out is, is uh, you like guys that you can trust from play to play to play to play um, without those, those little errors that can pop up. And, and our, our young linemen have done a really good job of, of making those errors pop up less. Um, and that's something, again, we expect them to, in these two practices we got this week, we think we're going to make improvement with those guys. Um, you get an ad practice on Monday, there's another opportunity. So um, again, Frank does a great job pushing those guys. He, he demands excellence from them. Um, and all those guys have gotten better each week. A couple more for coach. Coach, coach, you talked about the uh, – you. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you, coach, you talked about the leadership, uh, about uh, about your leadership and how good it is, And but there's not a lot of little guys. You know what I mean? You don't have a lot of long-in-the-tooth guys. They're, they're young leaders, aren't they? I mean, they seem to be – no, you're not – you know, you're pretty young still. You're right. Um, I would say that that uh, in that way we, we don't have a lot of uh... – Old. I mean, what is old? I, I don't know what old is anymore, but oh, 30, um, I get, you know, what I mean, 30, but you know, it, it's guys who have, who have been here for a number of years, whether that's four years, whether that's eight years, doesn't really matter. Um, when guys have been here three years in the system, four years overall, um, you're thinking of Sam and Jesse and Mixon and TB and, and I can name 25 guys right now. Um, but those guys, they, they, they probably feel, old. they feel like they've, um, they understand what we want. They understand what's what, how to win in this league, what it looks like, um, what we're asking these guys to do, and and how we need everyone pulling in the same direction to make that happen. And and it, the leadership, the age does not matter. Um, it's about guys respecting the guy who's speaking um, because they respect their actions and what they show in the locker room and on the field. And they don't just talk the talk; they walk the walk. And we got a locker room full of those guys right now that that exhibit all of that. 62 so when is you not look at a guy player. like Darius Hodge, how much of a joy is it for you to, to let a guy like that know you made it? You started as a, a free agent and you did the work. 
and you took advantage of the opportunities. And it says to guys, it doesn't matter where you start, it just matters where you finish. I, I agree with that. And I would say well before I got here, um, there, there's a strong history of undrafted free agents making a significant impact on the roster here. And, and again, that, that goes hats off to the scouting department for uncovering those guys because everybody brings undrafted free agents in the building, the same number, everybody does. Um, but, but here, guys have really um, uncovered some gems that have come in and made a significant impact for us. And, uh, you know, hopefully Darius is, is the next in that, that line of guys that do that. Um, he brings great energy to practice. He's had an impact in these preseason games. He's getting better. Still got a long way to go, but he is getting better. And in both phases that he plays in. And, you know, it's just important for guys like Darius to understand it's this, okay, it's not over. It's not, all right, I made it. Here I am. You know, there's still a long way to go and you got to fight for your job every single day. Um, but, but it certainly is rewarding for, for a lot of those guys that, that are fringe guys, have been fringe guys this year over the course of years. Trent Irwin comes to mind as well. Um, guys that just, they are in the opportunity. And so, again, we don't always make that decision. They make that decision and they fight their way on the roster and then you can't keep them away and they're going to have a significant impact for you. As you're putting together your practice squad roster, is it best player available? Is it based on position need, based on the numbers of your current 53-man roster? Are there a lot of factors that go into your practice squad composition? There's a lot of factors that go into it, but at the same time with 16 practice squad guys now, um, if a guy's a great player and can help you and he might be an overlord at that position, then oftentimes you have the luxury to, to find a way to make that work. Um, used to when there was eight or 10 or whatever it was, if it was a little bit more difficult, but with 16, you get a chance to, right. to keep the players that you're really excited about. One last question. Zach, uh, Chuck has Pat Patrick looked really good, gave you a physicality that uh, very few teams have at that position. Just he's one of the guys out of 20 that you had to wave. What will the next 24 hours, how, how will the process go of guys that you really want to see back on your roster? There's a waiting game for all 20 of those guys, you know, and, and again, we'll know more, you know, before one o'clock tomorrow, really, who's going to be back and who's not. And, um, you know, there, there's certainly a, a large number of guys that fit that description for us.